Okay, today it's 13th of May and we are looking out the window. Surprise! Everything is white. Okay, back to the working table. We have um, uh, put the perfing in and now we're uh, taking it down to the level of um, uh, well just where uh, the surface strikes it so uh, I am very careful not to go below and make like a, a dig it out because uh, we made a lot of effort to uh, to tune the arching down and uh, we do not want to destroy that by going deeper here and make another arching here because that will affect uh, the rest of the arching as well so uh, we do it this way this is a handy plane uh, you see it here um, I worked uh, the edges of it so uh, the blade goes really close to the edge and then it's scooped like a gouge so this is like a gouge plane and as I mentioned before I love to plane I think it gives me good control over the process of taking away wood. I take the rest in the corner with a gouge. And I do not have a plane for that, in case you wonder. Guarneri purflings are sometimes a little bit wild and uh, he uh, at some points he uh, was sort of digging down in the channel uh, so the purfling is under the surface of the plate and uh, in some places it sticks up a little bit. On top of that, you know that uh, he has some cracks on the purfling like that. Uh, you can see that on uh, Lord Wilton and uh, Heifetz violin, David. If you're really into sort of copying or, or doing a, the un recently found Guarneri violin, <laughs> then you have to uh, be a little more, have a little more imagination when you make the perfumes. Uh, 
Uh, I have also made my seabot purflings with uh, straight strips and just uh, well in the hard turns here I uh, put it in my teeth and uh, chewed it a little bit and uh, I put straight strips here so it cracked a little bit and uh, I guess that was the only thing that well uh, that really made it a genuine Daljesu copy kidding I like to make Vesterlund violins so I sort of let that copying mission go away if you make the perfect copy of uh, Mona Lisa every stroke of the brush every tint of the color everything is just spot on that is the Mona Lisa but it's still not in 50 years people will be amazed that someone could make something that looking that much a Mona Lisa and then you see the artist's name in our case it's a label inside and it says this and that person made this astonishing violin looking exactly like Strad or Return to Mona Lisa well it's it's a fake Mona Lisa and it's a fake Del Piso or whatever and uh, still it's a good violin but all the characteristics and all the fingerprints from the maker are not there if you find a rocca or a presenda where you really really copied a guarneri or a strat or whatever well where are the rocca or presenda signs in order to make a perfect copy you have to blank yourself totally you cannot insert anything of your own making into into this copy no ideas of yourself nothing uh, nothing pointing at you it's just well almost man machine made <laughs> if you get what I mean and uh, there's a longing to sort of repeat what the old masters did so therefore we're making copies but uh, um, it's um, well I given it up as you understand from this vague conversation mm. the Guarneri corners I use this very tight gouge for the first cut And then 
I use this, it's a flat gouge, but uh, it's uh, um, rounded in the edge. And I make the sides here. Flatten out the bottom of this channel. When I make a Guarnier model, I still make charmingly sloppy, if you understand what I mean. I mean, when you look at a Picasso or something, uh, I'm pretty sure he could paint almost photographically like, but uh, there are some elements in sloppiness or fastness in work that are so charming. And uh, between Strad and Del Gesso, I'm more of a Del Gesso guy when it works it's finished but um Sanding and sanding, or scraping and scraping, uh, just to get such perfect surfaces. Oh, I lost a corner here. <laughs> Didn't see that. Lost the corner in the surface out. Okay. Tap into the JC2. When we see a JC violin. We uh, look for his tool marks and his uh, varnish, say, problems, and his, um, well, all these signs, uh, like the odd looking scrolls. Uh, purfling mistakes and uh, it leaves us sighing with admira admiration <laughs> uh -huh. when we see a strad we are amazed by his uh, handling of tools just looking at a perfect corner with a bee sting. It's amazing how he could perform that with those tools, those uh, in that time. I mean, it's it's so perfect, and uh, <coughs> both styles are admired uh, rightly so i think it's uh, it's a really uh, that's class the mastership performed in that way
And when you try to imitate that, so very often it falls flat and has nothing to do with all that you admire in the old master's work. So, um, it's easy to say, but uh, I think you should uh, stick to your beliefs and try to uh, cherish your peculiarity and uh, your your style Uh, we flatten the edge 